After much delay, welcome back everyone. We've got The Alliance, or AK plus four currently. We've got Snoy drafting, My Nuts is here, Paris is here. I'm not sure if that's Sashka or not, uh, but Alliance, they were able to get a stand-in. The bad news, unfortunately, they couldn't get it in time. Well, actually, that's not even the point. They're playing with four stand-ins. They were allowed to play with three, uh, so it was a default loss for Alliance, but Ake and his friends, they agreed to play for the fans, for the viewers, so a big shout out to them. Uh, Admiral Bulldogs in Twitch chat for some reason, that makes sense in some universe, I guess. He's still on a break, but it's okay, we still love him. Uh, and then uh, Natasha, NIP, not the nip from Counter-Strike, as I think we've been over for the last two hours. Uh, but we're finally here, Star Ladder, Season 11. This should be a fun game. Maybe expect some clowny things since it's basically already in the record books. I'll be your host, Helium, and hopefully we'll have some fun. Looking at the uh, the bands here, Tide, Sky, Witch Doctor, Broodmother, first band coming out from Alliance. I don't think they're quite ready to play against the hero yet. Just don't want to deal with it. It, it is annoying. Obviously, Broodmother has its counters. Uh, they're pretty easy to figure out as well. And uh, Brewmaster going to get banned out. We already saw some great Brewmaster performances today. Alliance not looking to see one, unless I guess it would be them picking it. But they'll ban it out. They take out the PA as well, and they've uh, gone for the puck. We saw some really sick puck play, which feels like days ago at this point, but it was actually just a few hours ago. I think the VODs from the previous games, which were... Uh, what were they? VP Virtus Pro versus Vega, formerly Europub, and VP Polder versus uh, Nip here in Natasha. Uh, both of those VODs should already be up over on the YouTube channel for Beyond the Summit. So you can check those out if you'd like a little later on and see that sweet puck play from DK Phobos for Polar. But puck, vengeful spirit, so some nice team fight control. I think, I think we're, we've all adopted the term of, of tempo, a tempo hero in the puck, kind of controlling the team fights, setting the pace. And uh, vengeful spirit, just a solid support with the stun. Another swap always good, and the hero scales very well into the late game as far as supports go. Uh, looking at Natasha, it's Ogre Magi and the Wisp. Not a pair together, but those probably are going to be the two supports. We'll see what cores they want to put in with those supports. That's going to be over their next three picks here. We'll see an Omni Knight. They actually did play it. Uh, they played it mid in the last game versus Polar. It didn't do very well. I think Omni Knight finished the game 0 and 9. Uh, so spoilers for those uh, mentioned, those earlier mentioned VODs, but uh, yeah, it'll be Jakiro for the Alliance, picking it up there. Could be a support, could be a core, pretty good third pick hero, although a lot of times Jakiro getting picked in the first phase or even banned out in the first phase, depending Ten on what team you're playing seconds. against. And looking at some more bands there, it's Viper and Earthshaker to take the fall. Reserve time. Waiting for that fourth pick. Uh, if Alliance was watching the last game or anyone's even telling them, like, hey, Natasha ran this Omni Knight in mid, then they could probably counter that pretty easily. Also, picking up a hero that might want to build a defusal is never a bad idea. Defusal, it's pretty good agility, so it's not a it's not an item Drow Ranger would not want to go. So maybe we'll see your pick one up. The long range silence is maybe going to be good enough if you just hit Omni Knight with it at the start of a fight. But it's Drow Ranger, and now almost immediately, Natasha, they pick up the Tear Blade for their core hero. So looking to get that illusion based hero. Tear Blade, uh, I mean, he's great early, early split pushing, and even if he gets shut down a little bit, you can find his farm pretty quickly. Doesn't need much to become a farming force like an Aquila and a Yasha and treads, or even a little less than that, you're pretty much set to farm the jungle and even push out the lanes with your illusions. Reserve but uh, it's not a hero that's going to pair very well with the Wisp, so I'd, I'd maybe expect one more core hero. I think they did Chaos Knight with Wisp. Again, didn't really work out too well, but uh, they might try to get one of Wisp's good old friends, Tiny Wisp CK. Obviously, they won't be getting PA. There's a few others, I'm sure. Looking at those last bands now, though. Over to the Alliance. Uh, for those in chat wondering, is the D2L bet still on? I would assume it's not, but I have 
actually no clue. So I, I'm sure Star Ladder is going to sort that with the Dota 2 Lounge admins. If it's not on, you guys will get your items back. Don't worry. If it is on, I'm sure there will be massive Reddit posts and it'll probably get turned off. I don't know. Good luck. This is why I don't bet on Dota games. But uh, obviously a lot of people fiend it. Ooh, clockwork. Surprising. I guess they they see that there's really no initiation, right? I mean, unless Omni Knight, Ogre, Magi get a Blink Dagger, who's going to catch out Dro? Almost nobody. It, it would be someone like Clockwork. So I think that ban secures the Drow Ranger. Sorry, I'm wishy-washy on saying Drow and or Dro. Um, secures the Drow Ranger pick a little bit. Like She can easily escape a relocate. She's probably going to get a Blink Dagger. So anytime you see the relocate coming in on the minimap, just blink away and there's nothing they can do. And they'll even get a little greedy as they draft up this Enigma for the for the last pick. Gonna throw it into the jungle. We've already seen that uh, once, a couple times today, even I think. Ten seconds remaining. And uh, it was a Visage ban. Yeah, that makes sense. Remaining. But hey, I mean Enigma with the Eidolons, also ranged with the Precision Aura. I mean that's some tower pushing. Or if they see the Eidolons are attacking a hero, it's it's still gonna be pretty good. Uh, they probably actually did want Visage, I would imagine, as now uh, NIP, Nip, Natasha. They're going to go with a Zeus here, and if I can remember correctly from the last game, I think Immune was the mid player, but I also don't trust my memories, so I think we'll just see where he's going to go once we hop into the game here. Waiting on. I'll, I'll keep a look at Twitch chat. I'm actually not quite sure. I know my nuts. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I know my nuts, but the player here, my nuts, also uh, been a popular stand-in for Alliance. So I know that player. I I believe Second Paris remaining. is Sashka, but I'm not positive. Profile was private, so I couldn't really check. Uh, and looking at who else is on their squad right now, I'm not sure who Snoy is, unless it's an alias. Obviously, I know who Ake is. And I'm not even sure I want to say Jakiro's name, just in case, but yeah, he's there too, Jakiro. Again, not sure who he is, so Ake and my nuts are the known players here for Alliance. We'll go back through who's playing who, uh, but let's start with Nip over here on the Dire. We've got EQ going to be playing the Ogre Magi. I think that might be another stand-in, because I don't remember that from game one. Happy, I do remember. He's playing up. I like the green. Uh, playing that green, Terrorblade is happy up there in the safe lane. A little bit behind him uh, will be the Ogre Magi. That's going to be Seneca. And then towards mid, yeah, will be Immune playing on that Zeus. And that'll take us to the off lane where we'll have Ogre with wards. Uh, played by EQ again. And Vlad here playing Wisp. We saw him play Wisp earlier. His Wisp looked pretty good, but he wasn't really given much of an opportunity. And we'll see he goes with the same build. They take Wisp to this offlane, and he doesn't buy a single thing, hoping for that bounty rune. If he picks up the bounty rune, the bottle is completed. That's what he did last time. We'll see if he can replicate. And I guess it's going to be a farming ogre. Like, I think ogre bought some support items here. Let's actually check the word. No, Seneca bought that. So it's going to be a core ogre farming on the offlane. But I feel like he can't possibly get much against the Drow Ranger. Maybe with some levels, ogre magi can just run at Drow and Killer along with the uh, tether speed and, of course, the regen coming out from the uh, bottled wisp. Maybe it's enough to just run at Drow and kill her. But uh, if Ake is nearby, I, I feel like they're not going to find kills or get much farm. I mean, ice arrows, frost arrows are going to keep you kind of zoned off the creep wave. Granted, Ogre does have 7 armor and over 600 HP, so it's a pretty durable hero. Still, it's a melee versus Drow. Yeah, what? Oh no, Wisp, I'm sure Wisp wanted that bounty rune just like last game, but it's not going to work out. Ake gets it, he almost gives up his life for it, he gets pretty low, and now they're still chasing down Paris. You got Ignite first here on EQ, he's going to throw out another one, trying to force out as much regen here. Already one Tango gone, this might actually be the first blood, Creep's getting involved now, trying to save Paris, but I think he's going to fall, he'll salve under the tower, it's cancelled, EQ. Talk about a tower diving hero at level 1. He's got 7 armor. Tower now hitting Wisp. I don't think this is going to end well for Nip. Ake with the body blocks. He might give up the first blood. He will. Vlad grabs it, but Ogre also going to die. And Drow Ranger going to pick up a double kill after the first blood. 
I gotta say, it's not quite worth it to give Paris that double kill. Or actually, let's see, was... Oh, it was split amongst, so it didn't calculate the double kill. But he is still the only hero there for the experience. So, Drow Ranger off to a pretty good start. Vlad, well, he does complete the bottle and the magic stick. So, at least he's got the sustain for the offlane now. Is that the worst thing that could have happened? Like, it could have just been a double kill, Ake and Paris both living. That would have been the worst thing. Uh, but, hey, at least they got the first blood. It was definitely some ballsy play. We might see that a lot from Nip, considering they've already got the victory here today. For those of you confused about that recent point, just ask Twitch chat. I'm sure they will help you out in a, in a clear and professional fashion. As Seneca trying to chain this pool. The dire pool is such a pain, mainly because of this. And actually, Zeus gets a kill in the mid lane on Puck. Zeus does kind of own that matchup. Uh, but we've got Jakiro contesting that pool. And it's pretty aggravating for the dire supports. You are basically forced to stack the small camp because chaining it is not reliable. But back to the middle lane where Immune did find that kill. Apologies for the miss. He's got 10 and 3. Puck getting really, really zoned out. The bottle's already here for Immune. He can grab a rune, bounty top, double damage bottom, and he can refill that bottle already to continue the harass out onto Puck. Finding it hard to keep his face in that lane, although he did get that magic stick, so. Also, doesn't even have his bottle yet. Only 500 gold. Zeus will get the double damage. He's going to look in the jungle right now. He's going to try to find Snoy. He's not, well, he's not going to try to find him. He will find him. Might get actually stunned out by the centaur. No, War Stomp on cooldown. Going to farm some Eidolons with double damage. The value, 27 gold. I feel like that's not worth it because he's just left this lane. You're slowing down Enigma a little bit, but who cares? Enigma can bounce back so quickly in the jungle. If he's left alone for two minutes, he's basically right back on track. And you were just dominating a Puck. Puck is now completely caught up in the middle lane. Probably has... Okay, still a little behind in levels. But has farmed the bottle and caught up in last hits. Amu now rolling through with the double damage. The orb was just used aggressively, so I think my nut's going to take some damage right here. Also, what a brilliant name for uh, just anybody in an uh, eSports competitive game fashion with casters. Like, just forcing people to say my nuts over and over again. That was a calculated name change, I'm sure. If I was a player, I think I'd name myself, like, I'm the worst caster NA or something, so that the caster had to say it every single time. <laughs> that's, some, uh, that's some trolling right there. All right, up top, it will be an offlane with... Offlane Jakiro with boots, so he's farming up. He's actually doing pretty well. 13 and 5. He's slowing down the Terrorblade's farm a little bit, but Terrorblade doesn't need that much to really get online and just start farming like crazy. And when he does, he can go to the jungle, and they may even give the top lane to somebody else. If Wisp doesn't find 6, they might put Wisp up there. If they want Omni Knight to get some items, as that hero can really take you far into the late game. But he needs big items, right? He'll need an Ags, he'll need a Refresher, and maybe they give him the top lane for a bit. But here we go, some more aggression in the bottom lane from the Nips. We've got Ake in some trouble. Hellbear, Hellbear Smasher trying to get involved. Everyone attacking so slow right now. As Enigma will find the kill on Wisp, Wisp will find the kill on Vengeful Spirit. And now Enigma in a lot of trouble, but Paris is here trying to bring down everybody. Snowy actually going to get a double kill. The Eidolon's doing so much work right now. I was worried the Hellbear Smasher might be taking the kills. Paris is in some trouble. EQ will bring him down. The Ogre Magi getting a kill. Ake already back. The Eidolon's creeping. Ake, you got to go for the body blocks here, but he's too slow. The cold, the ghost creep slows him down, and he can't get in front. Eidolon's still doing work, but now Vlad with the heal. Snowy is back looking for more kills. EQ, though, he's just too tanky with the Wisp. And now we see the strategy coming into effect. The tether drops for a second, and as a result of that, EQ almost drops as well, but he is able to get out of there now. 2-1-2 two, and two involved in four kills. Nips 2, Alliance, they lose 3. And that was uh, a very, very long fight. Overcharge was used 3 times. Spirits was used twice in that fight. And what is that? The 20 second cooldown. That fight at 5 minutes almost lasted an entire minute. So it started, I guess, at 4 minutes. Ridiculous. Back to the middle lane, though. I think Immune made a really big mistake when he left with that double damage. Puck caught up considerably. It's now 25 and 5 for Zeus's last hits, 24 and 4 for the Puck. 
and is going to have some help. The rotation up here from Snoy and Ake, they've even smoked, and they have another smoke in inventory. So this, if this is successful, maybe they even head top, gank down the Terrorblade, and actually Jakiro, as we go top, is in trouble. Terrorblade will bring him down, the Repel helping him out. He's got boots and 1,200 gold. Over towards the middle lane, they're going to find Immune. This is the smoke gank in action. Puck going to get involved once the kill will find the kill. Really, really trying to secure it just to, again, catch up in the lane. And at this point, even get ahead in the lane. Drops the coil and the auto attack to finish it off. Now Paris finds Vlad. Vlad needs to get close to something. He needs the tether. Do we have a value point in Gust? We don't. And as a result, he will tether away. That's why camera work fails miserably, but it's okay. So Paris off the lane. Only 14 last hits compared to the Ogre who was farming in there at 15. So they're actually pretty even. It's a, it's a strong dual lane, that's for sure. And they're going to go on Paris again. The Spirit's all connecting. The Ignite's still here, but it's three on two. Midnight Pulse, that actually does hurt the Ogre quite a bit. Mind Nuts is there, going to get involved again. Take that far orb. Try to bring down the Wisp. He's the one sustaining this. He even wands up to live with just six HP. And now the Zeus is here involved, looking to turn it for the team. The Ignite onto the Enigma. Everyone else retreating. There's the Fire Blast to bring down the Drow Ranger. Snoy gonna fall, double kill for EQ, somehow also barely living. There's a heal, he's got five wand charges as well. Immune's looking for some more, but the puck a little too slippery. Slippery will be able to escape. And now it is nine, two, six, two for one team fight. Nip taking some pretty big gains off of that one. And Ake back down to the bottom lane, zero, three, and three. The Drow Ranger, one, two, and two. Brown Boots and Aquila. EQ and Vlad just being aggravating, diving the tower because they don't take any damage from it. They might be biting off more they can chew here, though. They'll probably kill Ake. They will, no problem. But Puck is here. He's dropped a two-man coil, and Paris is going to clean up. Double kill there for mine. <laughs> they both snap the coil, and they just disappear. Good one. Nice rotation. Value TP there. Value bull TP, rather. Definitely paid for itself as he finds two kills. Goes back to mid lane. Has the treads just to tank up against the uh, the Zeus damage, maybe even the pure damage of Omni. Zeus damage is obviously based off your total HP, so tanking up against Zeus isn't necessarily the best thing, but I feel like it's still the best thing. BKB, obviously, the best, but when is it not? Uh, yeah, all right. Enigma working towards the mech, so... They realize it's a game where they're just constantly battling, so the extra armor and the heal from mech probably going to be a bit better than maybe just the black hole itself. And it looks like they're going to try to back up Paris. EQ. Do we have relocate already? We actually don't. Wisp is only level 4. and We're at 8 minutes 40 seconds. The tether overcharge, though, it's enough to get them away. Dream Coil still on cooldown, so let's check out. We've spent a lot of time in bottom. We'll go back to top lane where Jakiro, the most farmed on the map, actually, in the off lane, 1v2, obviously, Omni Knight's been brought to other lanes. Quickly, we'll have to go check in on the middle lane. They're going for Immune. Can they bring him down? My Nuts will get him. And might be in some trouble. Have to flip those treads over to Strength. Might bottle on Agility, then go to Strength as he tries to escape here. He's got it. He's just got to orb up the cliff. Who even dropped the coil? And Repel, because it's not going to break. But now he can't heal himself, so the damage isn't there. The plays were kind of weird, but in the end, same result. Puck will get away. I don't think he thought that through. He's like, oh, I'm going to keep running at Puck and not break the coil like he thinks I'm going to. And then he's like, wait, now I can't heal myself. Why did I do this? And EQ, again, being super aggressive as he needs to be. The Thunder God's Wrath will go out. That's going to scout everybody. So Nip have all the information. And with that information, they decided it's better to back out. And let's see, 10 minutes in. Uh, farming leader still Jakira. We'll flip it over to Net Worth, though. Top of Net Worth, 5-1-0. and zero. It's Puck, played by Minots for Alliance at 4.3k. The Jakira at 3.6. The Ogre, 5-2-2. Two, two. Seven of the ten kills he's been involved in. He's 3.4k, and just below that is the Terrorblade, and Zeus not far behind the pack either. But uh, Ogre Magi, with this role, with the, he's just running at people doing damage, I feel like he might want to rush out in Ags, as he does go Arcane Boots. 
Tranquils is also pretty popular on the hero. But uh, Arcane Boots with the tether, that mana increase is, is pretty undeniable. So I think that's why he goes for the Arcanes. Could also go for a Force Staff. Like, that's your other best item. But if Wisp is there to save you, I think he just wants the Ags to fuel this aggression. Have another stun. Basically always have a stun because it's a percentage of your mana. So you can't really run out of it. But we'll see what he wants to go for. Ake and Snoy, they're going to use their second smoke of the game right now and try to head bottom. If they fight with this, it'll be three versus three. Drow Ranger is down here farming, or at least trying to farm. They're going for the old wraparound. They might actually find themselves a courier. It's flying in right now. What's on it? It is a point booster. They see it. Point booster delivering to Ogre, so yes, again, he's definitely going for that. And four people down here right now. Puck's made his rotation. They're going to find the Omni Knight and try to bring him down first. Puck going to jump in silence. No heal. Dream Coil onto two right now, but Zeus has TP'd. Snowy with the black hole onto two. Ogre drops now. Wisp falls. Thunder God's Wrath from Immune in close proximity. It's big damage, but it's not enough to bring anyone down. There's the Gust. One point finally in it. And it's only Enigma to go down. Nip lose four. Meanwhile, Terrorblade is farming up here on the neutrals but it's big gains about 1100 gold about uh, what is that 1800 experience there in favor of the alliance and even gonna get some tower damage there marksmanship is online precision ore is maxed out draw ranger hitting pretty hard just a little over 150 wisp is uh still not level six wow I thought with Shirley being involved in so many kills, he'd be level 6, but he's still just shy of it at level 5. Soon the relocate will be up. Might cause a little bit more problems for the Drow Ranger. And, well, Minots will find a kill there. He, I think he's going to go down here. Yeah, his, his orb was used aggressively, and with the TPs coming in, with the burst damage from Zeus, it's not a tall order to bring down the puck. But Blink, Treads... We'll see if he even finishes the Null Talisman. Yeah, he will by the Null Talisman, Talisman and the TP. The Blink Dagger, so full mobility coming out here for Zeus. Yule Scepter already done on Jakiro. After all, he's, he's third in net worth, was the most farmed for a while. He's going to heal up with that Magic Wand. They'll swap back EQ. They bring down the Ogre, so they get some revenge on Puck. Although that Puck kill was definitely a bigger deal. O Ogre's actually... A, okay, no, he's falling way back. He was up there for a while, but now that the farming of Puck and Terrorblade has increased, he's uh, actually the last in net worth in terms of the core heroes right now. Your reign was short-lived, Ogre. Top tower is under attack. But still, made nice progress towards the uh, towards the Aghanim Scepter, which can actually make a pretty big deal. But, I mean, it is a game where Drow Ranger, I mean, that's a hero that builds a BKB and still does a ton of damage. Enigma, pretty popular to build a BKB on this hero, so it's it's not unheard of. Puck, not as much so. Might go for the Lincolns or something. I mean, honestly, could go for BKB. There's enough magic damage to support the idea. But uh, I would expect one on Drow and Enigma. They'll just deal with the Zeus, deal with the stuns of the Ogre. Also, Diffusal Blade for Drow, I think, seems like a reasonable idea. Still decent agility. We'll be able to uh, get off the GA and actually find that target to bring down. They'll find another one here in the woods. The two multicast isn't enough. The ogre falls. They'll rotate over, see if they can't kill Vlad. He's pretty crazy playing here. His creep wave is far away. He's got nothing to tether to. But they do have a nice ward. So they know what's up. Meanwhile, mid lane, I think they're going to be in some bit more trouble. Oh, blinking forward with the repel on. Little does he know the rotations from both sides, top and bottom. Ake and Minots with the pincer attack, and now Seneca, he's Guardian Angel, he's not running, doesn't want to take the magic damage, will heal himself up, might actually be able to bring down Ake, but no, the GA runs out, and they bring him down in just a couple clicks, double kill right now, now Vlad going to TP in, trying to bring down, it's just a vengeful spirit, I suppose it is Ake, but the big attacks from Minots, he's hitting for like 140 damage right now, he's got almost 2,000 in the bank, he'll find another kill, he's 8 Two and three involved in 11 of the 20 kills. Doing pretty good. Teamfight recap doesn't quite catch it all. Take a look at the graphs. Why not? Who knows what's going on? I think Alliance is winning, and, and the graphs would support that conclusion. Uh, they've got, what, 7,000 gold advantage? 7,000 experience advantage right now at 15 minutes, so that's, that's a pretty big deal.
All right, immune. Back to action. Blinking in. He's the blinking in to get the heals from Omni. I like it. I do like Omni Knight with the Blink Dagger for that reason, but I guess if your allies have a Blink Dagger, you can just do it that way. Now in the bottom lane, they'll go back onto Ogre. It's all Ogre now. He started off, what, 5-2, and two, now he's suddenly 5-6, and six, <laughs> so he's definitely on the decline. Kind of out the door in relevance even, like his stuns are still pretty big, but... He's not, like, Drow Ranger with the levels is now too strong, like, he can't stand on the front line. Even with with the Wisp, like, Tether Overcharge, he still is dying in just a couple attacks from Drow Ranger. Now with Marksmanship 2, she's hitting for over 200 damage. The first, Dying second tower is about to fall here in the bottom lane. They'll throw out the free Fortify, but tower's still gonna go down. Up top, they already lost that one to Jakiro. Fallen. They're also going to lose the middle tower. So all the tier 1s now, those two falling very quickly. All the tier 1s are down, making it a little bit harder for Immune to find that space. Terrorblade, how are you doing? That's not Terrorblade. That's Terrorblade. In the lane, he's got the Aquila Treads Yasho, so that's standard build. Uh, we'll <laughs> probably see uh, the Manta coming out. But here we go, let's uh, EQ. Again in some trouble. Seneca's there as well. The silence from the puck is absolutely destroying Omni Knight. He can't do anything. Nice alt here from Immune. It brings down the puck. Jakiro, not the most limber of heroes. Trying to get out of here, but it probably won't. No, he's going to go down. Another stun from EQ will get him. And they lose two. That, that's big heroes. It's a core Jakiro who's done well uh, for any of those just joining us. So that's a big kill. They also killed the puck. That's top of the net worth. The highest level in the game along with Terrorblade. So very, very big kills coming in for Nip. Maybe putting them back in this game a little bit. Terrorblade will rotate bottom. He's finished the ultimate orb, so we know that he's going for the quick Manta. No other stops along the way. Grass will turn around maybe a little bit. Pink's in some trouble. That's the Ogre Magi. Ake dealing with him. Snoya is there. Oh, I don't know if that swap was good. Okay, it's good. Paris is on the other side of it. Enigma was trying to cut him off and then got juked by his own teammate's swap. In the end, it won't matter. Minots picks up a Yule Scepter of Divinity. Will they even bench the bottle? Really? Surprising. It'll go bottom. There's the Yule Scepter onto Happy and... Well... He's, he's probably not very happy with that death. He was playing... He was really low for a really long time, pushing that close to a tower. They deal with him. And it was the real Terrorblade, too. Bit of a mistake, I think. Probably better to just walk back to base than it is to have died right there. So, two Yule Scepters right now. It's gonna make it a lot harder for Nip to focus a target. Like, if they go on Puck, already it's very hard to lock down a Puck. They can't kill Jakiro instantly either because of his Yule Scepter. And if they're deciding, all right, we can't kill Jakiro, let's not go on Jakiro, then Jakiro's going to be dropping big ice paths, big macro pyres, disrupting the fight, and it's going to make it harder to kill the other members of Alliance right now. However, if Jakiro's just wandering alone past the river in the bottom lane, then he's not that hard of a kill. <laughs> they will get him. Ogre Magi finds it. Zeus even put down the Thunder God's Wrath for that. He's even going to find my nuts too, but uh, does he really want to find that? I don't think he wanted to discover my nuts. That was a mistake. Oh, is he going to die from the Yule Scepter? That's ultimate, ultimate style points. Killing people on the Yule's 50 damage drop. 1,000 style points to Puck. I think he's the leader. I don't think anyone else has any style points this game. And Puck has 1,000. Tower going to go down. Wow, pushing up mid very, very aggressively, not worried about a thing in the world. And let's look at the vision of Alliance. Uh, they don't have any from this region, so that was, whoa. I need to fix that. Uh, pretty risky play for my nuts to push up there. The only word they have is actually here, and even that's about to run out. So, Ake, better get on that game. Let's check up that inventory. Is he, is he toting around some wards? He is. Ake not going to let his team's vision slack as actually Nip just refresh a ward there on the bottom rune, the Roshan controlling ward, and that'll actually take the Roche. It's very, very quick with Terrorblade Metamorphosis. They had the tether to keep him up, 
They had someone, they had Ogre to tank it. They bring it down no problem and without Alliance even realizing it. So the team very, very behind right now denies a pretty big objective away from Alliance. It's a sign of maybe good things to come here for this dire squad. Uh, they sort of stopped the bleeding here at uh, 7,500 golden experience. For the last, what, five minutes, it's it's kind of stabled off. Taking that Roche is good if they can take a, a solid fight with that Aegis. Uh, they're actually really close to finishing the mech up on the Wisp. Looking at Immune, if he can maybe get out towards that Ag Scepter, some more damage on the ultimate. Ogre has absolutely nothing, so no hope there. Uh, Aghanim Scepter is not far off from the Ogre. So you finish the Aghanim Scepter on the Ogre, the mech on the Wisp. I think you fight with this Aegis, and if you win it, you might turn this game around. If you lose it, well, you are on the path to losing the game anyway, so you might as well do something, right? High risk, high reward. Finish these new items, smoke up, find a team fight, and if you can win it, maybe take some objectives out of it. They've already done a good job securing the Roshan, but life could get a bit harder as we look at Enigma. He's finished up the Black King bar, so a nice 10 second charge there, which could lead to a big black hole. And Puck, 2200 gold in the bank. Blink Dagger, Yule Scepter already completed. We'll see what he goes for. I feel like Sheep is never bad. Just because there's an Omni Knight in the game, Diffusal, not the worst either. But I'd still prefer the Sheep if you can just jump on the Omni with it. Could go for Shivas, could go for Lincolns, Bloodstone, Dagon. I mean, he can build whatever he wants. Well, we'll see. But 2200 is a lot to save up unless he's going for a big item like the uh, Mystic Staff or the Ultimate Orb. So I'm expecting the Sheep Stick. Possibly Lincolns, just because of Ogre, but... I think he's done a pretty good job at avoiding it. He's 11 in 3. And we have a pause. Oh, it's immune. Lagged out. I didn't even look. I may have just realized it was paused. Nah, I knew. Uh, Seneca is going for a soul ring right now on the Omni. I mean, he's needed it. I th he probably started with the Sage's Mask and wasn't able to turn it into anything. Didn't really get to do much. He's level 9 and actually looking at the levels, he is the lowest level in the game. By 2 on his team, yeah, level 11 is the lowest for Alliance. And you can see the experience. I mean, I think this 12, Drow's 13, my nuts <laughs> is 15. Uh... I'll eventually stop laughing when I say that. And compare that to the Terrorblade, for instance, only level 14. Like, the core hero for Nip is a level down on, what, two of the heroes? No, just the Puck. Actually, I level up on Drow. Here's a relocate, though. Let's find where they go. Let's go. Let's go. There they are. Bottom lane. Oh, it's actually just a split push relocate. They'll get back to their teams in about eight seconds here. Immune, they're going to try to save him with this uh, repel. Making him immune, but not from that. There's the swap. Ake pretty far in. Terrorblade comes back along with the Wisp, but they don't want to follow up at all. Zeus is their damage. If he's not alive, you don't fight. And I don't think that really worked out. Maybe he was a little disoriented, having just, like, lagged out and got back into the game. Wasn't really looking at it for the last couple minutes. I don't know. Not, not good stuff from Nip. They really needed these next couple moments to be perfect. Like, complete those items and, and find the teamfight that you can win. There's one of them. The mech is coming out, and the Aghanims is coming out. So Zeus respawns in 20 seconds. You gotta fight. I, I guess... Fighting is the manly play. And I think even maybe the smarter play. But Happy is a Terrorblade, so you can always kind of be like, well, we'll just go really late, and Terrorblade will do Terrorblade things, and maybe we'll win. But I don't like that. And you shouldn't either. That's how we're going down. This is uh, the second tier two that's going to fall. Alliance to take it. Jakiro to get the last hit. Shocker. Liquid Fire. Good ability. Jakiro also sitting on a big sum of gold. He's got 2,200. So does Happy on the Terrorblade. So does the Puck with 2,400 gold saved up. Snowy with 1,400 in the bank. Drow Ranger must have just bought something. Yeah, BKB's completed there. Let's take a better look at the items, actually. I think this fight's breaking out. They've smoked. They're doing exactly what I want them to do. Here they go. There's the BKB, though. They're all so slow. A <laughs> two-man black hole. It's almost enough. Paris, though, brought down by Happy. And now I'll turn on Metamorphosis damage onto Snoy. He's BKB, but he still dies. And this is the fight that Nip needed. They killed three. It's a triple kill 
for their Terror Blade right now. Can they kill Jakiro? They won't even bother. EQ can't close the distance. Jakiro finishes a blink, but that's the fight that Nip needed. Unveiling those big items. They killed Drow, they killed Venge, and Enigma. They would have liked to have maybe got the puck. They would have liked the 5 for 1. They don't quite get it. We'll team fight recap it just to see how big of a deal it was. 4,000 experience and about, uh, what is that, almost 3,000 gold change, on the graph at least. It was, it was a positive of 2.2k increase, but it's going to make a big dent in the graph, and that's how you come back. So I'm, I'm really glad they did that. However, the Alliance uh, are going to be pretty aware that the mech is done, and they're going to be aware that the AGS is done, so they'll be a bit more careful. Other good news for Nip is that the 10-second uh, charge BKB was used for both the Enigma and the Drow Ranger, so that's going to make them... Uh, a little bit easier to deal with. Get that down to five seconds ASAP. And then they'll be right again at risk of dying to the Zeus, who is uh, getting close to the Ags. Now has the Staff of Wizardry. Level 13. They get to level 16. Get a ton of damage with Scepter at 640. Which is looking at Dro's HP, almost half of her HP before mitigation. So maybe like a quarter of it. Enigma even buying wards now? What a player. Terrorblade has finished a heart. He's come a long way. And he just got that, what, triple kill up top? So that was pretty nice. He's got Manta. He's got a heart. 2,200 HP. A ton of armor. Where did they just go? Why did they relocate like five feet? I don't know. Uh, who did they find over here? That's Puck. Face shifted up here in the river. Oh, they'll bring him down. And uh, they relocated about an inch. But whatever. They killed Puck. That's all that really matters right here. And they're going to transition that into a push. The creep wave already here and ready to go. Tower, tower will be fortified. Not going to be refreshed. This is not a tier one. So they're using the fortify. This is maybe an opening for Nip to get to the high ground push. And it looks like they want to go for it. They still have the Aegis quickly checking the Roche pit. They've got about 20 seconds on it. So if Terrible wants to go up and die, he needs to do it right now. Two times multicast on the Bloodlust. That's going to pump out the damage on some of these illusions here. The tower is absolutely melting. So I don't know about that Fortify. Tier 3 tower is down right now. Nip fully on the comeback. Trying to get the Rax. And they will. They are going to get this Rax. Aegis is going to run out in like a second. And right now. So Happy needs to be more careful. Alliance might realize this. Black hole in 10 seconds. The main reason why Alliance isn't fighting. No black hole. Pretty big deal. Macropyre was already dropped to stop the creep wave. There's the vision. That's just for the intel. If they can stay taken down the rack, then they'll completely clear out the bottom lane. Happy on the front lines with this heart is just too much. Two man coil for my nuts. Here's the Guardian Angel, though. Jakiro trying to do what he can. Snoy with the black hole. Gonna get two. Happy, though, once again, just wailing on him. Terrible not in the black hole. Alliance try to fight in their base. If they lose this, there's the buyback from Enigma already. Jakiro has one available. He'll maybe need to use it. Can they bring down Happy? The overcharge is there. This man is tanky right now. Silence goes out from Paris. They want to try to maybe bring him down if they can. Game is going to be paused. As Zeus has disconnected. He's back in base. Can't really get there. He almost he actually does have Agus completed. If he sells these, he can probably buy Boots of Travel and maybe just win the game right here. That is, uh, that would be a high-risk play right there. I would not advise that, but again, that would be the most manly thing that you could possibly do in this moment as Zeus. <laughs> Don't pause from you. That's pretty manly, too. Go? Don't wait for response. Ogre Magi resumes the game. I was the team resuming it. So he'll die. But still. Buyback forced out on the Enigma. His item progression is essentially going to be halted right now. Team fight recap. Useless. The big deal, though, is that the Rax has been completely cleaned out. And now Nip looking at the graph. Boo! All the way back down to equilibrium same thing on experience so uh, nip back in this game and I would say with the way the momentum has shifted they're they're ahead right now Terrorblade has got another 3.2k gold already he can go for butterfly after this heart 
probably will. Anyone even close to going for an MKB? How much money does Drow Ranger still have? Not a lot. So no MKB on the horizon. Butterfly does seem like the item to go. Wisp in a little bit of trouble. A ball being chased by a ball. The orb catches up to him and he'll be brought down. Actually, Drow Ranger gets the kill there. Now Alliance. They want to go on the full push. Paris here. Drow Ranger's pretty good at pushing, right? So is Jakiro. Terrorblade Illusion to deter them a little bit. Try to distract them. Eyes off the prize. But middle lane going to get pushed in. And Zeus going to disconnect again. Omni, Omni Knights had a fun game, guys. Zero and five. Tranquil Boots. Soul Ring. He's living the life over there. They picked that hero. I mean, they've picked it two times in a row. So I assume they pick it a lot. And it went zero and nine. And it's zero and five right now. I, I don't know. I feel like... I mean, it is a stand-in playing it. They, I think they had stand-ins in the last game, too. But... If your two performances are 0, 9, 0, and 5, I think you either pick a different hero or you look at how you're using Omni Knight and try to improve it. But maybe I'm being too harsh. I don't know. It's not an easy hero to work into your lineup. Items. Blink Yules. Blink Yules. Wow, my notes went for Ags? I guess that's pretty smart. He's he's had a lot of people repel to run out of the tether, so now if they repel and they try to run out of the tether, it'll stun them for like, what is it, something like five seconds? Uh, Ags, Scepter, Coil Duration, 8, uh, uh, 4.5 seconds for the Scepter Break Stun Duration. So yeah, that'll be a pretty big deal if anyone runs out of it. And they actually have a swap, which is... I feel like if you have Venge and Puck, Swap's like the one hero. Swap is the one hero? Venge is the one hero that could like tell Puck, go Ags. Like, the synergy's pretty good, right? It's, it's a guaranteed four and a half seconds stun on anybody if you just swap them and then break the coil. Uh, so that, that is going to be pretty solid. It's a big, big stun. So there's a synergy there. I mean, even without the Ags, like, it's still pretty nice. Guaranteed uh, pretty long stun, three seconds. Breaking the coil. Although if they don't have BKBs, you can just force staff them to break the coil. Uh, also works pretty well. And uh, whoa, what do you know? Ake has got a force staff too. So he's he's clearly aware of his role and synergy with my nut. Looked like Alliance was re, uh, rebounding pretty quickly, like climbing in gold. Um, they obviously had a little bit of a turnaround fight after they lost their racks. But, okay, never mind. Whatever, that point, no one cares anymore. We're back. They're pushing a middle lane, a liquid fire on the towers. Alliance, are they doing it? Fortify has gone out here. Liquid fire bringing that tower down really, really fast. Big multicast on Snoy. Almost brings him down. But the tier 3 has fallen. If they can get a racks for a racks here. Alliance will be doing really well, maybe even back in it. I mean, they're still in it, but maybe back ahead. Happy wants to wants to go for the fight. Trying to bring down this puck. Zoning Ice Path is everyone's just going to TP out. So they don't get the racks, but it's a little bit cleaner. They don't lose anything either. Uh, so the next objective, I guess Alliance maybe try to get a pick off. Push down mid. Or teams can look at Roche. Seeing Roche uh, respawning anywhere between like 30 seconds to 3 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm sure it will tell us pretty soon. And uh, I would just like to point out, this tier 1 is still here in the middle lane, somehow. Seems a bit ridiculous. Terrorblade will uh, see to it that it is brought down. And I gotta say, green, coolest color ever for Terrorblade. Yeah, Roche is actually going to be fairly long. It's going to be about 10 minutes, so the, the standard Roche time. So not fairly long. I guess it could have been 8, but whatever. Uh, it'll be back in 2 minutes. Even some damage under the tier 2. Once again, Alliance. Like, they threw out the Fortify on the tier 2. 
The last time they did that, they lost to Rack. So it seems risky against this lineup. Like, if you use that Fortify and lose the fight, your base is gone instantly. Although, I, I guess it's gone either way. Like, if you don't have buyback, you've probably lost. If you lose the fight when Nip is pushing at the door, like, game is over. Same actually goes for both teams. Like, with the Drow Ranger and a Jakiro, if they live and Alliance wins a fight, it's the same story. Like, Nip's base is gone as well. The Nips can't slip, or they're going to lose. All right, let's see what EQ can do. He's back. Eight, eight, and eight. He's back from the from the depths of being negative. It was like five and six. I think he fell to maybe five and seven. He's back. There's the swap, though. They're going to focus on the Ogre. Snowy goes in. He's positioned for a great black hole, but he can't find it. He wanted to drop the Midnight Pulse first, and now the Repel's here. It's going to break. Seneca stunned for a long time. Happy <laughs> stunned for four and a half seconds as well, which means they can't chase. Do they have a relocate? They do. They can maybe think about catching someone on the retreat. And uh, with another defense, that's item or items for the Omni Knight, yeah. He turns that gold into a blink dagger. So now we can play very, very defensive, try to save anyone out. And I think Nip, attack. they've realized that the Acceptor is there for the puck. Clearly, they were breaking that coil like it wasn't going to matter, and then uh, they couldn't continue to chase. Immune, nice. Bounty rune at 30 minutes. <laughs> Big money. And they're going to continue to push now. Enigma's down for 20 seconds, but the dangerous thing is when he's back, he will have Black Hole, and he will be ready to use it. So far, we haven't seen one be very successful. He's He's got, like, Black Holes on two, maybe even three at one point, but he hasn't got Terrorblade, and Terrorblade just killed him almost instantly. So the Black Holes, he's landed them, but he needs to land it on Terrorblade. And now they're pushing in. These Metamorphous Illusions, they still have a lot of time on them. The Repel is here for Happy. The Tier 3 Tower is going down. The Fortify is still cooling down. 2 minutes, 40 seconds. And a Tower now in Deny range. It's going down. Terrorblade with the last hit. They'll get him in the Ice Path. The swap out from Ake. That puts Happy onto the high ground right now. There's the Black Hole. Terrorblade's in this one, and he's down. He also got the Omni Knight, who I got to say, playing a little too close if he's got the Blink Dagger. I'm not sure how much he could have done anyways. Vlad, nice. Defensive. He will get out his allies. Now, ooh, fast hands from the Zeus, even able to blink out of there before the damage came in. And his ally is going to get right back into the fray of things. There is Jakiro in a lot of trouble. He will go down. EQ comes back with the BKB. Drow Ranger pops up. Her BKB will bring down the Wisp. Finishes up a Manta after that as well. Finds that kill. Puck going to get back into the base. Ogre, though, still wants some more. It's not Ogre yet. And actually, Immune will even find the puck. If you can get the multicast here, two more seconds. Multicast on the Ignite. He needs that unrefined. He's got it. He'll bring it down the Drow Ranger, forcing the buyback out here on the puck. Both teams have sustained heavy casualties. Immune gets swapped out from that TP. Nice play by Ake, and Immune is going to go down. I think he's just going to try to die in the fountain. Going to split the gold at least. Doesn't want to give the puck anymore. Going to try to make that buyback as not worth it as possible, but it was very necessary. 32 minutes in, Alliance holding on to that 5-kill lead. Butterfly now coming out for the Terrorblade, and another 1,000 gold on top of that, still in the bank. Terrorblade looks like he might uh, be in it to win it. Looking pretty hard for Alliance. They're actually now behind for the first time in this entire... Okay, not maybe the entire game, but since it's really mattered at all, they are now behind in gold by about 2.5k. Again, that value doesn't really matter, but it's just a sign of the times. Nip definitely turned this game around. Experience, basically even right now. And they're going for another Roche. But Alliance, they're here. They're ready to contest. Invis Rune on Enigma. Doesn't have Black Hole, though. Oh, they'll find Seneca, they'll bring down the Omni Knight. They're, they're pretty used to killing him, so I'm not sure how much that even gives the team. Happy, though, still alive in the pit, has an Aegis, has a newly formed Butterfly. Standing in a Macro Pyre, he will survive. He does have Sunder as well, He's not going to be able to get it off before he dies. So Aegis, he'll respawn with full life. Ake, probably not going to live here. EQ is just chasing, he even BKBs for that. Immune will pick up the double kill here. There is a buyback on Venge, there's a buyback on the Jakira as well. Paris, going to... Uh oh that was not the play. There's still BKB, tried to throw the Gust, got stunned anyway. Now Paris is going to have to pop his BKB, but Happy is here. He's in melee form, but he's doing enough damage still. He's Sunders, but whoa! 
That was close. He gets pretty low there. Puck still here, still fighting. Immune's trying to bring him down, and Puck... Where did Puck even go? Still face shift there. All right. What do you know? And now Minots will escape. Buyback, though. A pair of buybacks. Support Venge, Core Jakiro. Enigma's down for 30. Black Hole will be back up. It's up now. Unfortunately, he's still dead. And Drow's down for 40. Bottom lane of Rax was cleaned out earlier. They're definitely getting mid here, no contest, except maybe the Glyph of Fortification to slow them down a little bit. Refresher, the ultimate now for Zeus, gonna be terrifying. Hairblade Illusions and an Ogre will bring down the melee Rax. And remember, the Tier 3 tower fell here, but Alliance was not able to take any Rax. So right now, Nip are, are three Rax buildings ahead. And they're gonna look for some more as they try to bring down the Tier 3 up top. They know that Drow probably would have bought back already if she had it. So they're going to try to push in very, very aggressively here. Ake again, defensive with the saves. Black Hole is up, but who does Snoy use it on? There's no damage dealer right now. The Drow Ranger dead. She's respawning now. Maybe they can just defend this Rax and hold on to this game. There's a big coil. The repels aren't going to matter. Snoy, he finds it. The big three-man Black Hole with the ultimate from Immune. It's killing everybody. Puck is down for 100 seconds right now. Venge narrowly escapes, will actually fall, and they'll even clean up Snoy. That's got to be the game. Immune with the triple kill, unveiling the Ag's refresher right there. It's just a little too much. Now, Jakiro trying to get back into the fountain. Can he do it, though? The stuns from Ogre are too much. They're even diving the base right now. I don't know if this is the right play. Actually, Butterfly Heart, who really cares? Ultra kill for Immune right now. Can he get the Rampage? He finds it. No! Terrorblade will deny him the Rampage. Come on, Terrorblade. Give your buddy a Rampage. That's got to be the game. 41-39. A game that didn't even matter. Nip had already won it. But Alliance, even with the stand-ins, they're the true heroes. They showed up to play regardless. Put on a, a pretty fun show for us. So a big shout-out to the Alliance. To Ake. Plus four. I think uh, for the next game, which is going to be Alliance and... Uh, Alliance versus Cloud9 is the game that's coming up next. Hopefully, I think Loda is maybe still traveling back from the summit or something like that. And clearly, you can see how busy pro Dota players really are. He's traveling back from the summit. He's going to be jet lagged like crazy, and he's already expected to play in Star Ladder. So it's quite a bit. Same thing goes for Cloud9 and, and most of their roster. Not all of them, though, traveling back to Europe, I don't think. I, I don't know what their whole situation is, but obviously, some of their players are Canadian. Uh, but either way, hopefully that game is going to happen. Cloud9 versus Alliance here in Star Ladder Season 11 coming up next. It was on the schedule for uh, 2115 CET, uh, also known as seven minutes ago. So we're going to leave the lobby now. We'll be back, but uh, thanks for watching Star Ladder. You can buy the ticket, you can support Star Ladder and BTS on Twitter, and you can also follow me on Twitter uh, at HeliUmbrella. Looking for the big. 1,000 followers, so if you guys can help me out with that, that'd be fantastic, and we'll be back with another game, so stick around.